Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. you in the button welcome to the how to hustle podcast with hank this is episode 120 you follow me on instagram and twitter at i am hank that's h-y-m-p-e it's hype it's not hype i'm not geeked up very special guest in the building very different occasion for having this guest in the building but introduce yourself to the audience bro oh man wayne gets quiet and then these niggas just we're not editing this or nothing this is in the episode (laughs) all that right there the pause this is in there. Uh, no, I was trying nah. to let Wayne go first. Introduce but... yourself to the audience, hey, listen, listen, go. All right, all right. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. I'm going to let you go first. Oh, my name is Chris White. Everybody knows me as Chris Menace, a.k.a. Cousin 10, a.k.a. A.K. if you're from South Philly, so you know me very well. Uh, general manager of The Barn. Uh, I've been doing, what's that, this, in the service industry of restaurants and uh, uh, food and, uh, and, and beverage. For over ten years now, and I'm here to, I'm here with along with Wayne the the to, to, to give the kids some insight on a, a different life, man. That's all. Facts, facts. Yeah, now introduce yourself to the audience, Wayne. All right, so it's Dwayne, but everybody say Wayne, Weezy, Petey, whatever you want to call me. But professional, we are gonna leave it as Dwayne. Um, co-founder of Premium Power Wash, West Philly, but born in South Philly and raised. Um, so we do mobile power washing. We do everything from commercial buildings, um, residential homes, parking lots, you know, all, all that good stuff like that. So we've been right, doing that for about like five years, five years. Since we throwing out the businesses, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know. Get comfortable, baby. If you knew, this happens every <laughs> week. This is the rundown. At Custom Hustle World on Instagram, it's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jackets, custom jerseys, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and yeah, we got the soccer joints in now. The CH1s, 2s, and 3s all are available in any color. The sneakers are available in any color that you can put together. Damn near, if you name it, we got it on the sneakers. We got the collar shirts in case you got an interview. We got the T-shirts, the sweatsuits. We got the new track suits is coming soon, too. And the CH4s will be out probably like a week or two, you know what I'm saying? But you know we're working over here at Custom Hustle. That's at Custom Hustle. World on Instagram is Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Uh... H2H cleanings, breaking news right here. If you're listening to episode 120, we now have power washing. I wonder how we got that. H2H cleaning, we're now doing power washing. We're doing roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, remodeling. You got a tree need to be trimmed or any of that. We got all of that love for you. That's at H2H cleaning on Instagram only. And at I am hype, as you know, on Instagram and Twitter. And also, damn, I keep forgetting this one because I'm not really a TikTok type of dude, but I got it on there. You know, new listeners every day, B. Uh, at I am hype twenty three on TikTok. I don't make too many videos. Not a dancing ass dude, but you know it's over there. Um, <laughs> all right, episode one twenty one. Damn, I forgot the radio stations. Now hold up. Uh, Monday, <laughs> right, Monday, Eight o'clock radio network two o'clock. Tuesdays GFT radio network two o'clock. Wednesdays two one six to blend twelve midnight eight a.m. eight p.m. Then we go Friday. I say podcast radio network at ten a.m. Rest of the week is wide open, y'all. West Coast, we still trying to make that happen. Now. Episode 120 here. Chris, this is a, if you know me, you probably know Chris, because this is like a lifetime friendship. Uh, the barn where Chris runs has been the home of the How to Hustle live shows. Before I even got to doing How to Hustle by myself, we did the first live show for OLF. Uh, yes, episode 100 was down at the barn. Um, yes, we did. Because that's, if I tell niggas, that's my brother, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I look at the pictures the other day. I showed it to John and my wife, and I say, damn, I need to call, bro, but it's time to make a lot. I call him, we're going to be on the phone too long. He called me uh-huh. before I even got to call him. Talk to <laughs> us about what the fuck happened, bro. Oh, uh, well, basically, I've been running a dive bar for over 10 years now. Uh, before that, me and Hype used to throw house parties. Hype was the, uh, the bar to lick. this last. Huh? Pizza and lick, you already know. Hype is Pizza in the kitchen. Pizza and with, lick, yeah. You got to do a shot if you come in the crib. Hype on the bottom. Security guard. <laughs> R.P. Love on the door. He, he was the leader of club. No empty cups, but uh, so that led me to get into this this whole restaurant industry thing of serving people and making sure people happy and having a great time with people. So that led me into running and, and co-owning a bar. So in this bar that I I, I started. It started off as an African strip club. 
All mm-hmm. right, back in the 80s, 81s, it was New Third World. It was one of the hottest spots in Philadelphia. I mean, from Joe Frazier to the, the drug lords of Bucky and things like that, they all used to hang out in that one spot. So after a while, you know, gentrification hit, boom. We were stuck with an African bar. Well, the owner was stuck with an African bar in an all-white neighborhood. Me, I come around, I bring a good feel, a good mixed dive bar feel. Real, mm-hmm. with, which we throw electrifying events that includes everybody from Eagles games to to drag shows to pool tournaments to it, whatever you want. You can call it. You can have it at the barn. Show. It's an open Halloween uh, parties. <laughs> Halloween parties. I'm just saying it's an open space for everybody. For everybody. Yeah. Open space. I mean, like the Eagles game is, is Monday and everybody is buzzing. You know what I mean? Everybody Sunday is buzzing. Can't wait to come to the bar. Get some of the best wings, some good fries, and some just, you know, some Americanized food. Because in that neighborhood, there's not really that many Americanized food options. It's all uh, Ethiopian or some type of culture type of uh, feel uh, in that neighborhood. So we was getting ready for Monday night football. We close up early on Sunday night. We leave. I get a call about 2, 2.20 in the morning that the bar is on fire. So in my mind, I reach, I'm re going back, 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 retracing all my steps. Like, where, what did we miss? Come to find out, we didn't miss nothing. It wasn't our fault. It was totally out of our hands. It was a, a Wi-Fi cable router that just sparked fire overnight, which I have the video of. Just sparked mm. fire and blew the whole thing down. And there I got 14 to 15 employees that rely on me personally you know for their life man this is their money this, yeah. is, this is how they feed their children this is how they put clothes on their back you know pay their bills things like that so it's really really hard man like i've never been through that personally where your business blow up and that's why i reached out to wayne instantly because Dwayne, he been through it all as a as a a business owner that's been at the top and had to start all over mm-hmm I mean, so I'm, I'm going to pass this off to Wayne so he can give us some insight on, you know, the struggles of having to start over. Yeah, man, it's 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 a hard feeling, but with a good, strong support system, you know, when my truck catches on fire, he gives me a call, you know, give me some guidance, motivational speak, you know, it, you know, it, it's, it's needed. You don't know it's needed until until you hear from somebody genuine. But um, I'm working in the back of somebody's house cleaning some concrete. I go in the front, and my whole truck is on fire, right? It's in flames. And I'm just like, what the heck? So it's nothing that I could have did because it was already a whole big, big behind fire. And no fire extinguisher was going to help that. So call 911. They come out. Now, you know, I'm black in an all-white neighborhood, so the cops and everybody start looking at me crazy. I'm like y'all treating me like 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 a suspect. Like I'm a victim here. On fire. Right, I'm, I'm a victim <laughs> right. here. So, you know, this is something that I built, you know, from the ground up, right? And watching your investment, I'm talking about like 150 thousand in flames. You don't. Mm-hmm. That's my full time job. I don't have anything to fall on, right? So I'm, you know, get the kick, the tears, the boo hooing, but it's like. Can't cry over spilled milk, it happens. So now what's next? You feel me? So now I say, all right, I sit down for about a couple of days, but the business still gotta go. So I had my little um I had a Buick, what I had a Buick Regal, mm-hmm. put a load of um pressure washer, put that yes, in, you the, did. in the trunk, had my little hoses and all in the back seat. I'm just riding to all the customers, you know. But this is what is the best thing about the experience was. I deal with business people and I deal with good, genuine people. And I always make sure that whoever I I um come into interaction with, I you know, I'll be, you know, as honest as possible. So all my customers knew the situation. What can we do to help you? I'm like, you know, don't worry about this, okay? No, no, no. One customer, you know, a client gave me his Home Depot account. Whatever you want to buy, go ahead and buy it. I said, wow. Mr. Chris, don't worry about That's it. Amazing. Yeah, he yeah, he in Stucco world. Um, Mr. Chris, don't worry <laughs> about it. One of my one of my clients said, listen, we got a garage for you. You can keep your stuff here. Thank you, but it's okay, right? 
So good support system, good support team all around me. Um, and then, you know, I just started building up again, building while I'm waiting. The insurance paid for about a good portion of it, but I kept on working. My supporters from Instagram, you know, they giving me jobs and they even calling me and saying, hey, you know, whatever you need, let me know. So that let me know that I was doing something good and I was doing something positive at the same time. So people ask me, how do you keep on moving forward when this tragedy happened? Like you could have, I used to drive trucks before this. You could have went back and, and, and just started another, you know, go back to working for somebody. But what I look at it now is I had a big box truck, right? Big at behind box truck with all the good equipment in there. But I look at it like God, the universe, whatever, took that out the way because it was too big. I couldn't get down a whole lot of blocks. I was turning down jobs right. and, you know, I was going for air. So when I was tired of working out my car, I had went ahead and rented a, um, a Pro Mass of 1500. I didn't know what kind of vehicle I was going to get next. So I was able to maneuver down South Philly streets. I'm like, dang, you know, I might be use something like this, but just get a little bigger. So then I went back to the drawing board and was like, all right, well, I don't need that. I need this. I don't need this. I need that. So it kind of helped me. But I'm going to go over here real fast. Before the box truck, because remember, I had a 22-foot enclosed trailer yeah. with a dually, I mean, with a um, pickup truck. So that drone was parked down off of 76 next to um, back to new tire shot. That get hit by a drunk driver. A man called me and was like, yo, you got to come down here. The cops are down here. Da, da. Somebody hit your trailer. So I'm like, what the hell? So, you know, I'm, yeah, I am don't know what to do. So that's what put me into the box truck. The box truck catches on fire. It puts me in a Sprinter van. So you look at the whole story. If you know me, you're like, damn, man, you're, you you just keep on getting, you know, throwing these little, you know, these little curveballs. I'm like, listen, by faith, you know, my my family, my support, that's what got me. And I'm Facts. still here. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So now for everybody who's listening, uh, we didn't try to sob story you or nothing. We just want to give you a little background of the situation. We want to talk to you about business and being young black men doing business and mm -hmm. tell you that, one, you can do these things. Two, there's always going to be some setbacks. There's always going to be some problems. There's always going to be issues. Mm -hmm. It's how do you handle those setbacks and issues when you get them? Mm -hmm. You can sit there and woe is me. My joint is always, you crying, crying, spilt milk. You just grab the paper towels and start cleaning the fuck up. Right, <laughs> right, right. Sitting there looking at the right. truck going, oh, my God, I ain't going to be able to do this, that, or whatever. No, nah, this is the time when you really need to do this shit because now you need to still scrape up the bread. Like you said, insurance ain't going to cover the whole load. No. So, mm -hmm. We still got to make sure that we getting something coming in. Like you mm -hmm. said, Chris, I got 14, 15 people that's like, man, I yeah. still got to get this daycare bill paid. I still got to pay for these You're lights. Right. Podcast <laughs> is on my ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I still got to make yeah. sure that my situation is sturdy, but you got to make sure at the top when you run in this type of shit that one, you eat last is the thing people right. don't understand about business. You mm -hmm. can't be the first one to get paid. Like, no. Nah. No, because if uh -huh. you're the first one to get paid, mm -hmm. you gotta be the first one clocking in and doing all the work. Like, exactly. I got some jobs exactly. where it's like, I'm not gonna make that much, or I'm gonna have to do this by myself. And then I right. got other jobs, where it's like, oh no, I need, need to bring two niggas with me, I need to bring <laughs> like three people, or however that situation goes. So yeah. now, now that we've been talked about the businesses and all of that, the ups, the downs of the situation, now let's spin it this way, Chris. I know, like you said, the employees and all of that. You got the GoFundMe out there. Let's get the name out there across the country. We appreciate the love wherever you got it. You want to send something from South Carolina, we appreciate the $3. You want to send it from Houston, we appreciate it. You want to send it from Baltimore, we appreciate it. So let's throw that out there first before we even switch things up. Right now we have a GoFundMe going. It's, it's under help the barn staff, the barn, B-A-R. The N is in, in two quotation marks, I mean two parentheses, because, you know, it's the bar N for real, for real. Uh, right now we're trying to raise ten thousand dollars to help support each and every uh, each and every staff member, just to give them a a bump, you know, just to give them something to keep them afloat. Cause these times are hard right now, and, and I don't want nobody going to deeper and and you know deeper and beyond passions just to make some little bit of money. Like they don't have to do those things, you know what I'm saying? Uh. Like I said, it's on GoFundMe. It's also on the Barn page on Instagram. It's the Barn West Philly. 
if you're on Instagram uh, or uh, Facebook, it's The Barn West Philly on Facebook as well. We're also on Google as The Barn West Philly. Um, yeah, the GoFundMe is uh, help help the barn staff at, you know, westphilly.com. And that's basically much, basically it. We're just trying to raise and we got we got we got a, a couple of investors now. We got about four grand. We put it up there the other day. So we we almost there, bro. We're almost there. We just need a little bit more help and anything. I mean, even if you just post it on your page or anything, it'll help us tremendously. Right. No, hey, Chris, let even... me know because any you know, anybody that I can help, you know, um, you know, come work with me for you know for a couple of weeks or whatever the case. You know, I definitely would do that. And, you know, whenever you need me to come out there, because you always call me and always giving me, yeah. you know, giving me game, you know, making sure that I'm mentally and, um, you know, spiritually, you know, there. So I'm right. going to do this. I appreciate that. You know, I ain't trying to be all sentimental and all that, but I appreciate no, we, that. As, so, as black so now, men, you need, as black men, we need, we need our, our own type to call us and say, yo, you're doing good. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Sure. All right. Don't let for that sure. shit get you flustered. Stay uh, happy. And like, sure. Just because that. just because you said this, I'm about to say this now. Here. <laughs> now um, it's me and me and D just met. So this is not about D. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> me and Chris though, Ben, I told you I don't have a date for when we met. I love you, bro. Love you the too, thing bro. that people always be like leery to say is like. I let a nigga, and I'm letting a nigga know. I don't want you to be, you was in that fire, and now I got 66 pictures of you on my page, and oh my God, this is my man, and this, this, that, or whatever. Right. Sometimes I might just text a nigga, I love you. I don't even want nothing. Some right. niggas might text you that, man, you know they're about to line you up for $300. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Some niggas the text will come through, and that's all that the text is. It's just a text. It's not yeah. a yeah. warning shot. It's not a line. It's just, it's just the I love you. Bro called me and said, yo, damn, you seen what happened? I said, what you doing Sunday? This is an episode, nigga. Like, we ain't about to whole burn this whole situation out on the phone. On the phone? Nope. Oh, this is an episode. Let's let everybody know about this joint. Because, yeah. like you said, when I needed somewhere to do the shit, for, when I needed somewhere to do the live shows for my situation, the nigga told me, bro, what are you talking about? Come down here. Say no more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, anything I I really I didn't. Do... I didn't even entertain his conversations. He used to call me trying to like talk about the setup. I'm like, bro, you got the whole day. Leave me the fuck alone. You got right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, you got go, it, Yo, you want, me, you want me to come watch your front? Wayne, just come and do it, man. Don't even worry about it. You do it when you do it. Just do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so this is the this is the segue that I was given there. You know what I'm saying? This is why I do it like that, though. Because you got to have I had the ups and downs of the preparation for your business. Yeah, man. Right. Now that we mm -hmm. talked about the downs of the business, let's talk about the ups of the business. D, let's start with you. Talk about the ups of doing the business by yourself. Like you said, I got no safety net. This is all I got. So let's talk about that now. So being aware that anything can happen, you know, no matter what it is, I could fall off of something or, you know, the economy could go totally dark and don't nobody want to spend any money on their house right but the great days about it is it just let me know i got to be more smart with my money when i do get paid like we said earlier when i get a check from somebody that got to go into seven pots you know for the future for now for investments for what is for maintenance for upkeeping everything like that and Please. I'm blessed that I'm able to get up every day and go to work and make a living for me and for my family and also show everybody that it's possible. I'm from South Philly. You know, I don't have any college degrees. I don't have any, you know, business, um, you know, history or, or degrees or anything like that. This all comes from passion, dedication, and consistency and the people in my corner. So the great thing about it is I get up, I do something that I love, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it taught me to value my time. I look at my time differently. I look at my circle differently because if I know I'm trying to go somewhere and I look at somebody like Chris or somebody like you and we can have a good genuine conversation about anything and everything and not just partying, you know, not just, you know, doing this, not that it, if that's what you want to do, then that's fine, whatever. 
But the good thing about it is you meet good, genuine people when you're going down this path and you start to meet, you know, good other entrepreneurs. So the great thing about that's it. Called being a versatile, that's called yeah. being a versatile adult. Uh, right. If, you, if you're stuck in one lane and you can only do one thing, you're not a versatile yep. adult. You might yeah. be grown, but Oop. you're not a versatile right. adult. <laughs> I'm doing something that I love, meeting new people, you know, um, you know, beautifying the community, you know, one project at a time. And um, uh, and watching the like business that. grow. You might, might steal that. <laughs> you know, no, don't worry about it. I got it already. Don't worry about it. And, we might steal that. Watching, that was nice. Know, uh, yeah. Right? Watching your, your, what you created. I don't have any kids, right? Watching what you created grow from from a baby into five years now, you know, where, you know, we making at the end of the year, we should be about like around, you know, it ain't it ain't much, but around like two hundred thousand. That's a lot. That's a lot. But that's a lot, you know, from making right, zero. Wait, 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 wait. Let me to see, 200. Let me, now let me jump right in on you here because <laughs> don't do this. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. never don't yeah. ever let nobody or you don't do it to yourself. Don't never let nobody demean none of your accomplishments. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm no, quite no, sure no, when no, you no. did when I'm quite sure when you was only doing one house, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? You were saying, damn, if I could just get five clients, then shit would be cool. Five clients, so babe. Don't, don't don't never let don't never let it be like, man, I know it ain't much, but it's only man, that shit is it's better nah, than yeah. nothing. Yeah, you got five don't even, now you got five clients in in, in, in one morning. And one more. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So <laughs> shouts out. This is something that I said a couple weeks ago in the episode. I think that was 118. Shouts out to Nair Castile. Me and him talking when we met. And I said, nah, bro, I'm trying to do. And he said, nah, you're not trying to do it, bro. You doing, you're doing it. it. You're doing you're it. Doing it. Like, <laughs> yeah. When he met me, like, you know, whenever you see me, I, everything I got on, I own. So, right. And right. I'm telling him that. And he's like, nah, bro, you're not trying to do this shit. You're doing you, you doing it. You're doing it. I tell, people that, I tell people that all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so this, yeah. this is kind of like for me, I'm not getting comfortable where I'm at. Like, I'm blessed. I'm happy. So don't get that wrong. From making right. zero to 200, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. But in my eyes, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm not comfortable there. I want more. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Copy so, that. so, yeah. so, so, so that's all that is. You still you know motivated. You still hungry. Still motivated. Yeah, I can't be, I can't get comfortable. You know, when you on business on your own, nobody tell you to get up and go outside and make money. No. You can lay down no. like I don't want you could cuddle you with your wife. With your own. Yeah, you can you gotta you gotta wake running, up on your own. Wake up on your own, you know. Make somebody so, else money. You that's right. And make somebody else some money. That's right. That's you know, crazy. But, but you, know. you stepped on my answer, but go we all that a teasing building. Go ahead. I wanted to <laughs> hop in there. You go ahead. I wanted to hop in there and piggyback off of Wayne and saying, like, you know, the good things of, you know, being in business and things like that is definitely it's the connections of the people you meet, especially the yeah, positive ones. Audience. I mean, it's even the happening. negative ones that you come across, you always <laughs> learn a lesson from. Yeah. You always learn a lesson from, but it's definitely the motherfuckers you meet on a daily basis that want you to win. And, and and that's doing their own thing. It, it brings it all in, into play because once everything happened with the bar, I had four or five general managers calling me for other other bars, other restaurants around the city. Like, yo, we need bar backs. We need a bartender. We need cooks. Send them my way. I got you. I got you. And I was just like, damn, that's love to, to, to turn around and connect with so many other people like in your industry or not even in the industry. Like Wayne said, yo, send them my way. I got some, got some work for somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of the whole thing is knowing that you connected with so many motherfuckers that's around. When you fall in your back pockets, it's somebody there. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's one of the joints I always tell niggas, if you got a good name, then, you know, you can always stand on that. I don't yeah. have to call a nigga and ask for nothing if you got a good name because they know if you calling, then it ain't a problem to do it. If you always the nigga that's calling, then it's an issue. Yeah. Um, right. 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 So I'm going to give y'all a long walk now. When I'm nine, graduate from elementary school, get my autograph book. My cousin owned an Islamic store. I buy 25 bean pies. He gonna sell them to me for $25. I can make 25 on these joints. I'm gonna sell them for $2 a shot. The first time I do this and flip this 25 into, into 50, I say, I gotta ask my mom for no bread. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's 13. My brother is working for me. We Thanks. at Juma, we offer these joints at Juma. If we don't get rid of them at Juma, we hit in the barbershops. Thanks. I learned this as a nine-year-old. 
that if I can do this shit by myself, then this is like kind of what I want to do. Right. When we start doing a podcast and I sell two wristbands, my cousin gave me this four dollars and I said, yo, I just made money off of the shit that I came up with. Yeah. Like the mm-hmm. shit that like we came up with this shit. We came up with the concept, the colors, and all of that shit. Now niggas is gonna buy this shit where it just cause we doing it. I gotta do this. The same thing, like yeah. you're saying now, uh the same shit y'all both kind of really just said. It's the you create something and then watch it grow. Yeah. I started the podcast, which kind of led into the clothing line because it was like I did these jerseys and then my man, three of my niggas say the same day, damn bro, I probably need two of them Johns. So in my head, yeah. that goes, okay, that's eight jerseys, that's 16 pictures, that's an Instagram page. <laughs> and, I need some work. I need some work clothes too. For real. I need some work clothes. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're we gonna yeah, talk yeah, soon as we get off the show. Yeah, yeah, I need some work clothes and all that. We, we talk as soon as we get off the show. Um so like that snowballs into the sweatsuits and jackets and football jerseys and basketball joints. Like it snowballs into everything. I see a picture of myself at my cousin's birthday party and I got on a jacket, a sweatsuit, and a jersey. I say, damn, I own all that shit except them Nikes. Fuck Nike. I don't make no money off Nike. That's yeah. how I got the sneaks. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. shit like that, like you just said, you start something and then watch it grow from just I got two jerseys to now you name it, I probably got it. You know what I'm saying? And, right. Um, right. The cleaning company that started from I worked at PGW for 14 yeah, years. Yeah, I remember that. Nigga, t- nigga told me in there, bro, you be doing a good job in here, man. You ever want to make some money on the side? A lot of these guys got properties. Uh, I got three houses myself. What you doing this weekend? I'm coming to see you in them three houses, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, now I got business cards on the time clock. I got, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I got jersey orders on the door when I get to work and all of that. Like, mm-hmm. so that was another one that Chris took it to. It's the connections, the connections that you make. The best thing somebody can do is give you opportunity. They give yes, you opportunity they to fuck up or opportunity to su- succeed. Yeah. And I tell my friends all the time, all you gotta do is show me where the block at. You ain't even gotta knock on the door for me. Show nope. me where the block at. Uh-huh. And after I know that, or oh, we just walk uh-huh. down here and I can make it happen, nigga. I'm down there every day and we're every happy. day. I got five uh-huh. things happening down there. Now. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. That's definitely the best. The best part is having an idea and then watching it come to life. That's also like the shit, like with the whole situation with the clothing line, because most of the shit is custom. So it's like you got an idea in your head. Or, I want my jacket to say this, and I want this on the arm and that, and I want right this kind of material, Putting all that shit together and then watching motherfuckers see that shit happen, and then yeah. they go like, "Yo, this Jonas, I love that shit." Uh, connections is how any of this shit works, though. Like, man, and like I said. I full disclosure for the audience, y'all don't know this, but you know, we like to keep it all the way of being. Me and, mm-hmm. me and D met 20 minutes ago. <laughs> for real? I called and seen his face. I call- said, Who the hell is this? <laughs> Bro called me and said, Yo, you seen what happened with the barn? I want I want to talk about it. I said, say no more. This is an episode. He said, All right, yeah, my man got a business too. Say no more. You, come on. you said that's your man, so that's good. And I don't work for everybody. Niggas were looking. Listening, appreciate you hitting the button. We only accept five stars. You don't know how to host a podcast, right? But that doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> but certain people, if you, if you throw it out there, no, nah, that's my man. Copy. That's all we needed to know. Um, yeah. so one more time before we go, before we wrap up episode 120 on how to hustle podcast with hype. I appreciate y'all coming on. All the new listeners, I appreciate y'all hitting the button. Again, we only accept five stars on how to hustle podcast with hype. Whether you're on Apple, Spotify, however you want that situation to go. But five again, stars. Five stars only. <laughs> Again, throw out your Instagrams, your handles, and give me that GoFundMe one more time for everybody so we could donate and try to get the barn staff a little extra couple dollars in this situation. Definitely, definitely gotta get the barn staff a couple extra dollars. You can go go find me to help the barn staff. All right, the, the end is in parentheses in barn. Also, you can find any information on the barn's Instagram page at the barn West Philly, or you can catch it on my page, which is cousin 10 SP. Um two z's to be exact and uh like we said anything will help us right now right now we just had our whole bar burnt up over a wi-fi router that just sparked overnight uh uh also on the page is the videos of the fire anything anything will help you can spread it around on your insta stories or anything i mean anything will help at this point Mm -hmm. and before i go i want to say I want to give my appreciation to all our supporters, you know, family, friends, whoever been rocking with you, Chris, you know, because we can't be here today 
if we didn't have, you know, people by our side. So I'm here today with my business because of my sure. family, my spouse, and, and, and my great support system. So I, you know, truly appreciate y'all, each and every one of them. So my name is Dwayne again, um, founder of Premium Power Wash LLC, 100% mobile. We come clean at your house. Well, we do all um, exterior windows, buildings, sidewalks, all that good stuff like that. Instagram is at premium underscore power underscore wash. Uh, on Google is premium power wash. Copy that. And since he says spouses, shouts out to my wife. Since he said he's going to throw that in there. Right. Shouts out to my wife. <laughs> exactly, bro. <laughs> he's going to throw that in there. We can't make hey, that like man. man. Shouts out to my nah, wife. Nah, man. Listen, I'm just listen. I just want to let it be known, man. We, you know what I mean? People behind us, baby. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, if you no, listen to this, you know, somebody I'm, behind you. One, if you listen to this, you know I'm married and ain't hiding. I tell chicks all the time, I'm always in your DMs, but it's just this week's episode. I don't want to. <laughs> That's episode 120. I appreciate y'all coming on. We are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.